By all rights, I should not be sitting here talking to you. I should have died in Vietnam. William Whitmore of Virginia Beach, Virginia, is a 72-year-old semi-retired insurance agent. He's also a Vietnam veteran. In early 1966, at age 18, he walked into an Army recruiter's office and volunteered to go to war. I wanted to defend the United States of America, fight for it, and that was my sole motivation. That sense of duty and patriotism was inspired by his dad. He was a bombardier on the B-17s flying in the European theater. I loved my father. I was very, very proud of my father. And all I ever wanted to do in my life was have him be proud of me. But it was his mom who made sure her children were in church and inspired William to give his life to Jesus when he was 13. But like many teenagers, his focus soon drifted to other things and away from God. Was he first on my list when I woke up in the morning? Absolutely not. I was 17 years old and just and being a typical 17 year old. By June of 67, William was fighting in the jungles of South Vietnam. It was like 105, 110 degrees and the humidity was 100 plus and it was absolutely stifling. And then all of a sudden you're hearing lead flying all over and gunshots being exchanged. There's an adrenaline rush. It's hard for me to put into words so that another civilian would understand exactly what a firefight is like. Are you in fear of possibly dying? Yeah, but is that all you're thinking about? Absolutely not. There's a brotherhood that is formed once you're in combat. Out of all his harrowing combat experiences, the one William remembers most came while he was on patrol on January 24th, 1968, just six days before North Vietnam's famous Tet Offensive. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that something very, very, very bad was getting ready to happen. William's company of 126 men was ambushed by a force of 2,000. And the opening verse took out half the platoon. The sound was absolutely horrifying. And as I'm running and firing, I feel this very heavy hand on my right shoulder. I was pushed to the ground. As I'm going down, I feel something burning the back of my neck. That burning was a bullet. The hole in his bandolier that he still has today shows just how close he was to death. There's no doubt in my mind that was the hand of God pushing me to the ground. If I had not gone to the ground, I would not be sitting here talking with you. Many of William's comrades fell during the firefight. One of them was his best friend, John. I wrestled with that for over 51 years. John was a great guy. Everybody loved him. Great leader, married, happy family. And I'm asking God, I am a nobody. Why did you decide to take him and leave me? A few months later, William went home. But that question and the horrific memories would plague him for decades, causing nightmares and paranoia, all of which he kept to himself. So he pressed on, became a police officer, married, and started a family. He also joined a church. But it would take 10 years for him to realize what it meant to truly follow Christ. I had the, the very stark realization that I had given my life to God. But as William, I had never surrendered all of my life. So in tears and in prayer, I surrendered my life in its entirety to the Lord. I said, I'm yours, 100%. But even as William began living his life for Christ, his mind was still troubled by the haunting memories. Then in 2012, more than 40 years after leaving the battlefield, William took the advice of some fellow veterans who urged him to get help. And they said, you have not only got PTSD, you have got severe PTSD. The pressure of having survived what I went through, okay, and not thinking about it, not talking about it, not opening up about it, it literally became a time bomb inside of me. With long-term therapy, the wounds of the past began to heal. Then more healing would come when William went on an honor flight trip in 2018 where volunteers take veterans to Washington, D.C. to remember and honor their service. 
When I came home from Nam, I was called a murderer, a baby killer, that I had caused the war. But to go on the honor flight and to be treated the way we were treated literally took your breath away. It was also a time to honor and remember the fallen. William found his buddy John's name on the Vietnam War Memorial. I was able to apologize to tell him how sorry I was that he had been taken. I said, I want to say goodbye and thank you for all that you did. And I stepped back and I saluted. On Veterans Day and every day, William encourages all of us to express appreciation to those who have served our country. The best thing you can do for us is to say thank you but to genuinely mean it from the heart.